So it all starts with a very simple question. Why are we so addicted? Why are we so connected to devices and applications? It has much to do with usability, but it has much to do with emotion. And this is exactly why today I want to talk to you about UX, emotions, and attraction. I'll start with that, and then we'll start to understand why we fall in love with applications, cheat on applications, and so forth. Yes, we're going to talk about cheating in a short, so stay all awake, please. Yeah, okay, so let's start with a very bad UI. This is from a gas station in Israel. There's a translation for our US guests. It is the accept, and here is the call for assistance, and you can even see the path of despair moved by the finger of the customers who simply move the finger from, oh, it doesn't work. You don't believe me, right? Raise your right hand. Come on, come on. Raise your right hand and dial on the screen your home number. Do that. Try that. Oh, you can't, right? Because some really talented UX designers like us has decided to make it, I don't know, it's not even twisted. This is a very bad UI, really, really bad UI. But I think it goes much deeper into, do, into UX. This is my lovely daughter, Inat. And one day she came back from the kindergarten and told me, Daddy, 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 take me to Paris. I want to see the Eiffel Tower. That's how she pronounced it. So I asked her, Inat, she was three, four, something like that. What is the Eiffel Tower? And she didn't know. So I told her, dear beloved one, why do you want to go to see the Eiffel Tower if you don't know what it is? And I swear to God, this is what she told me. Listen, Dad, there's an iPhone. There's an iPod, there's an iPad, and there's the iPad. It must be fun. <laughs> now she knows that, yeah, she's lovely. She knows that IP, hopefully in white, is all about fun. Now this is UX, right? This is, well, my clicker will work today. This is UX, but wait a second. Is it really UX? Yes, it is UX, but we have to take a much deeper look into UX if you want to better understand it, from a humble opinion, of course. So if we're talking about experience, we're talking about emotions. If we are talking about emotions, I always think about this gentleman. Mm, mm, yes, Clifford Nass, unfortunately passed away a few months ago. I think he was a genius, as much as my humble opinion. And he, back in the 90s, established a very nice uh, theory named CASA, Computer as Social Agents. Now, what he was stating is that we are treating our computers and our applications as human beings. We are giving them human characteristics. We think of them as human beings, and this is the CASA. Somehow it got forgotten, I don't know why. I think it's a great theory. Here's one of their his latest research, sorry. Uh, yes, here it is. One of his latest uh, research, he has, uh, he has very had actually a very nice book regarding auditory interaction. I do strongly advise you to read it. And he made a very nice experiment, and he made two synthetic voice. One was female, and the other one was male voice. Now, it was clear to everyone that this is fully synthetic. Now, he asked his subjects to evaluate how authoritative are the voices. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, surprise. Even though computer has nothing to do with gender, even though the subjects completely knew that these are fully uh, computer-generated uh, sounds, they all thought that the male voices were more authoritative. We can't skip it, okay? You look tension. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so this is basically uh, emotions, right? Now, when we talk about emotion, we tend to think that there is no way of mapping emotions. It looks so weird. It looks like so different, or, I mean, vague in a way. But there are theories for that. This is a theory by Russell. And what he said is something very interesting. You can map all emotions on two axes. One is intense compared to mild, and one is unpleasant compared to pleasant. Now, in this circumplex that he called it, there are all of our emotions. We don't want to be as UX designers on that side, right? Because it's very unpleasant. We don't want to design unpleasant designs for customers. However, let's look at the other two quarters. At the lower place, sorry, at the lower place, look at the emotions. It is at ease, calm, relaxed, cont uh, content. It is some emotion. These are some emotions that you really want to use while designing great UI or great UX. But 
in time to time, we want to be here. We want to be more appealing. We want to be excited. We want to be happy. We want to be delighted. We want to be glad, right? And it doesn't go together. Why is that? Because these are the intense emotions, which has nothing to do with the mild emotions. Now, if we think about UX as a map of emotions, something is missing here. Any idea from the audience? Here is a nice tip, hint. It makes, uh, it has to do much to do with the fact that we are all arranging couples typically. Have you ever heard the, the, these words while designing user interface? Make me something appealing, lovable, attractive, sexy, right? There's all bunch of mating or romance or sexual emotions that are involved in our daily life. And they are basically missing from UX. So here I want to state a new expression. Don't say UX anymore. Say you, well, it was a nice animation. Say you sex, right? <laughs> so we are talking now about you sex and not only about UX. Now, UX is very important, but you sex is as important as well. So I want, I want to state it out loud and clear. We are using unconscious mating patterns when we use computers. We are using our mating patterns all day long while interacting with computers. And the better we understand that, the better we can design applications that will appeal and will be appealing to users and customers. And our journey starts here. So the first tip for you is, oh my god, oh, wait, yes. It's not for ADHD, yes. Okay, this is my first gorilla idea for you. Think about mating while designing. I'm not kidding. Think about mating while designing. Think of the application that you design as a partner for life. And think what would attract you to this person. And it will help you a lot, and we're going to make a deep dive into that soon. Don't worry. No phonography is going to be here, okay? No phonography. Anything that I'm going to talk from this point and on will be based on real academic research, well-established, and hopefully interesting and fruitful for you. So let's get back to our journey. Yes, we understand by now, okay, we understand by now that there are emotions and attraction. It has much to do with user experience design. And we are now starting, we will now start to talk about love, attraction, cheating, and even dancing in a short while. So let's start to talk about love. Yes, one of the main basic foundation feelings, love. We all wish to be like that. Now, as a UX designer, you probably heard all the time this. You can replace the name Jacob in your name. Make me something lovable. Make me something cool, something new, something white, something like Apple that nobody else does, right? Forget it. Okay, but you know what I mean. People want to make something lovable. Now, if we're talking about love, there's a huge body research about love. And this is the way love goes. Now, this is an average of many, many, many research regarding love. Typically, it should be very familiar to you from the second lecture. Follow with me. At the beginning, there's falling in love. The stars are shining, the birds are singing, the sky so blue, where are you, my love? Right, you know that feeling? Do you remember that feeling? Have you been in that feeling before? Okay, you're falling in love. That's the first, enthusiastic, the first stage. And then comes four years of love. Why four years? Sorry to disappoint you, ladies and gentlemen, because most of the theorists do assume that this is the time that it takes for a little kid from being a hopeless, helpless, sorry, infant till the stage that this infant can be part of the kid's community in the tribe. Four years. That is the time that it takes for two parents to get to raise their little kid. And that's a sort kind of plateau. And then comes, unfortunately, loss of interest. This is typical shape of love. Many theories, many explanations. This is the way it goes. Sharp climb and then a decrease. Unfortunately, or not so unfortunately, sorry. Now let's have a look at an application. This is draw something. And it's actually the same for many, many applications. Actually, most of the one that I saw. Now let's have a look on this graph of usage of appealing. It starts with discovery. It goes on with long-term usage and it ends with, sorry, with loss of interest. Looks familiar to you? Yes, it does. 
Why? Because we are unconsciously applying our love patterns toward applications. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're using the same pattern. So it looks the same, as simple as that. Actually, a research by MTV Networks tried to find out how do we engage with connection, with relationship, with applications, not with human beings. And here is what they found. First, there is the discovery. Then, there is the adoption. Then, there is a trial. And only then, there's a decision if you want to use it or not. Looks familiar to you? Yes, it does. It's the exact stages of love, just the same. So here is my little tip. When we design user experience, I speak for myself, when I design user experience, typically I take into part the first stage. Hopefully, I take in that is falling in love. Then I take into consideration the second stage of the plateau of being in love. But hardly I get on with the third stage of keeping me in love with the application, right? I think I'm not the only one here, but maybe I'm the one. So this is my first tip. Try to think about the three stages of love. Great, let's keep on with that. Am I speaking too fast? Do you want to slow down? Do you want to do? Are you all awake? Yeah, perfect, thank you. So we spoke about why we fall in love with our apps. I have no idea about the clock because it's there, but never mind. Okay. Why do we leave our beloved one? You know, many. I won't ask people in the crowd to raise their hand who is divorced. I don't do that, it's okay. But you know, the stats are really, really interesting. About 25% in certain cities in Israel, about half of the couples in the United States are divorced, as much as I know, which is huge. So we are leaving our beloved one. Why? It's a good question. So. Let's get back to application. When you ask people why don't they use the application anymore, 40, about 40, 42% will say that there's no new content over there. There's nothing new over there. Since there's nothing new over there, they don't find any interest in this application anymore and we'll leave it. These are the stats. Now let's take a look on keeping the oath. Okay, how do we as human beings want to keep the oath? That is keeping together as a couple. Well. Make better bonding, it's nice, it's, it's just something that you can say out loud, but it won't help us anymore so much, sorry. But if you want to really get into depth, you have to make it look new each time. You know that feeling. You know exactly what your husband is going to order in the restaurant, and you know exactly what your wife is going to say for this and that situation. You know everything. You know even what she's going to wear for the next wedding, right? We are so predictable in interpersonal communication or relationship. Now, if we want to keep on the oath, you can ask each and every marriage consultant, he or she will tell you it's a good idea to make some changes, not too dramatically, not too big, not too small, but some changes. Now have a look on Facebook. Facebook changed their UX in the last two years for how many times? Any suggestion? 15 times. 15 times, uh, I counted at least 15, let's put it right. I counted at least 15 minor changes in the interface of, uh, of uh, Facebook in the last two years. It's not a change that makes you feel that you are all new married to a completely new lady or guy, depending on what you prefer. It's just a little change that makes me think, whoop, there's something new in this relationship. And this is keeping the oath, basically. So my tip for you is buy a new clicker and then think of what <laughs> marriage consultant does. Think about marriage consultant. This is only a half an hour lecture. I don't want to take much more than 30, 35 minutes because you're all tired. But basically, think of what a marriage consultant does and try to imitate him or her. You'll find it really, really helpful as much as concern to maintain the connection between you and the application you design, or the customers and the application you design. Great. So we have understood by now why do we leave our beloved one, but unfortunately, from time to time, let's put it back in the, in the order. We know that UX has much to do with emotions. We know that emotions has much to do with appealing as sexual and mating patterns, and we know that we fall in love with applications 
also in the same, almost in the same manner that we are falling in love with human beings. And then we know that we leave our beloved one also almost in the same pattern and the same order of living human beings, same goes to applications. And now I want to talk to you about cheating on our spouses. Now, don't get panic. Typically when I speak about this, people just look straight ahead, don't look aside, it's okay. I'm talking not about you, but about the general population. You are okay. Fine. Fine. Yes. Yes, there's a good uh, term, till death do us part. Well, you might get married till death get you part, or in relationship till death get you part, but basically, unfortunately, this is what happens. So do you remember this graph? You know it by heart, right? Now, perfect. And this is the cheating zone. Oh, sorry. This is the cheating zone. Typically, people won't cheat in this place, even though it happens kind of a lot, but not that much. And people will tend on cheating on this area. Why? Because the loss of interest, because of many, many reasons. We see that in a second that it's even genetically, can be explained even genetically. Fine, so let's look at have a look at the numbers. Okay, how loyal are we to our apps, not to our mates, our apps. Now I'm talking about human and applications. Keep in mind, I keep on mixing it all the time because I want you to get the message. It's just the same, from a humble opinion, of course. So, let's see what happens when uh, we are using applications. It's really, really hard to estimate because there are many types of applications. There's a game you download from the App Store, and there is a IT software being used for 20 years. But basically speaking, if, if I can even talk in a general manner, 54% after 30 days, and then 43% after 60 days, and then 35% after 90 days. This is on average over many, many applications in the App Store, the usage pattern. So we are cheating or leaving our applications. Now let's have a look on human beings. Okay, oh. yes, how many people cheat on their beloved one? Now I'm not asking you if you're cheating or relax, you're not, you're perfectly okay, but the numbers they are, think inside your head what would be the number thing. Okay, here's the stat. The stat is 50%. That is, 50% of the population ask anonymously, will report that they have cheated or cheating right now on their spouse. Keep in mind, 50% is uh, the total answer. Answer, it's probably much more higher why is that? A, people feel uncomfortable to say that they are cheating. B, people at all range of ages are being asked. That is, this questionnaire is not taken in a um, retirement house, home, right? It's taking all around, and people have lots of, lots of years to live and unfortunately cheat on their spouse. So the number <laughs> are unfortunately goes rise to 70, 75% which is huge, it's a huge number. Nobody talks about that, except of me. But this is a huge number, really a huge number. You have to take it into account. Now, what is even more interesting is that, you know, when having, you know, what you do when you cheat on your spouse, kids are getting born. How many of the kids in France are not by the father? Now, this is a really silly question because it's always by the father, but I mean not the father who raised the, the gentleman who raised the kid and think that he's this little baby, cute baby, which has my eyes and my lips. Has nothing to do with him genetically. 2.8% in France, which is the average, uni uh, the, the average in the world, by the way, it's 2.8. No data for Israel, for all Israeli in the audience, which are the majority because of the name Amzirut and so forth. Nobody does this research in Israel. We don't know in Israel. And the world record goes to? 10% to whom? Mexico. Yes. Any Mexican in the audience? All right, I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't give this lecture in Mexico. Any people from Ireland in the audience? They used to beat the world record with 16% a few years ago. Unbelievable. So 10%, around 10%, one of 10 kids 
in Mexico is not by the father. Now it sounds to you might sound immoral or so, but genetically wise, it's really, really good idea. Why is that? Because you have a variety of genes in your home and more chances for your kids to survive. I'm not kidding. That's what happens. Whenever I say something serious, people keep on laughing. I don't know why. It's my destiny, but okay. So it's 11% in Mexico, right? And actually, there's a research. Uh, it, there's a genetical basis for that. There's a gene named Allel 334. It's done for men only as for now. And we know that if both appearance of this gene are defective, the men will probably cheat. Let's it put it in a must uh, uh, pessimistic way. If you are genetically healthy, most chances are that you will cheat. We are born to cheat. And genetically wise, of course. My wife, I know that you're watching that later on. I'm just talking about genetically, not I'm okay. So <laughs> basically, yeah, we are genetically prone to cheating on 334. The good news are that this researcher asked the wives, how satisfied are you from the relationship with your husband? And there was completely none, even one single difference between uh, the boys with the defective allele and the good allele. That is, all wives were unsatisfied. I'm not kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> really, yes. Sorry, ladies. Sorry, men. That's we are. So this is allele 334. Now it teaches us two things. A, if you're getting back home 2 a.m. in the morning and your wife waiting with you with a roller pin, maroch in Hebrew, don't even try to tell her, Jacob told me in the lecture it's my allele 334. I won't get to the trial. Forget it. A, B, what it teaches us, first of all, as a cognitive psychologist, as a psychologist, I want to be with empathy with you. It's okay, don't feel bad when they leave you. We are genetically designed for living, unfortunately. But if you have a lemon, you can make a lemonade out of, lemonade out of this, right? Out of it, sorry. Yeah, perfect. So one day I'll know to speak English. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is this? You're all wrong. This is a bar. <laughs> Again, this is a bar. Now, there are many, many applications there, basically doing the same, almost looking the same. You have one in your device already installed, maybe five, and still you get into this place and say, wow, so many things to select from. This is a bar. In Hebrew, there's a terminology pickup bar. I'm not sure about the States. There's a bar that you go to pick somebody for the night. Not me, of course. I'm happily married for the last God knows how many years. But this is a pickup bar. And the dynamics inside the pickup bars are almost the same as the dynamics inside the store. You've got an excitement when you get in. There's checking. There are so many options and so forth and so forth. It's just the same. Now, my tip for you, somebody spoke about ethnographic research. I'm, I just want to see what the time is it. You can join me to a tour in a bar not a lo uh, next this Thursday. Sorry, lost my attention. Yeah, so focused. Yes, try to go to a pick a bar. Or tell your wives and husbands that it's on a research task, of course. And try to see what works there. What works there will work for you probably when you design applications. Believe me, it will work for you. It helped me a lot. Not that I haven't been to a pickup bar, not even a single one. All right, but it's a good idea. Try to go there and try to see what's going around there because these are the same uh, behavior. So till this point, we know that we fall in love with applications the same way we fall in love with human beings. We are leaving our uh, partners and we know how to maintain it. That is do hire a marriage consultant to your project. And then we are unfortunately cheating all the time and you can use it in order to design a better UX or better applications so people will select them. Now we go to the point that we have to answer the very basic question. Why on earth do I fall in love with that man or with that lady, this lady and so forth? What attracts us people? Because if we will know what attracts us, we will better know how to design UX or user interface 
or GUI, I don't care how do you call it, but if we understand the mechanism, the underlying unconscious mechanism inside our heads while selecting an application, we'll better know how to design one. So, first is normalcy, okay? Well, a research, another research, as I told you before, no pornography, just research. Are you okay? Are you all relaxed? You're so quiet. There's no green light here waving whenever you are with me or not. It's a problem, but okay, that's life. Um, 20,000 men, sorry, this research was to men. I'm trying to balance between men and women in this lecture, but it's really a short one. And they've been asked, what attracts you in a woman? Completely legitimate question. So here goes the answer. First, sexual chemistry. Well, men, what on earth is sexual chemistry? God knows, but it has something to do with <laughs> sexual chemistry. I heard that, I won't repeat that. Okay, sexual chemistry, and then comes the smile. Second place, 20,000 people. And then comes kindness, and only then sense of humor. I love number five, general body type. Probably the layout of the application. I'm not kidding. It's probably the layout of the application, how it looks, how it is arranged. I'll see that in a second, but general body type. And then the eyes. And then seventh place, sorry to disappoint you ladies, intelligence. <laughs> you don't have to be much wise in order to have a real good man. And communication skills. Now this is really surprising that men even think about communication skills as a trait, <laughs> right? I mean. God, we're working on emulation. We don't have really emotional system. We are men. Come on. But okay. And then teeth and lips and then hair. Now, ladies, look at this too. Think of that when you are dating. Most of you invest about half an hour on the hair <laughs> and about five seconds on the lip gloss. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Switch it. <laughs> Reverse video completely. Okay. First, so this is what happens at the beginning. But what, happen, what happens later on, it's much more imp important to us because applications are not used for five seconds, typically. We want people to use our applications for longer and longer periods of time. So it goes. It starts with kindness, go to sense of humor, and communication in case you won't understand anything here. Let me do it for you. First of all, sexual chemistry drops from the first place to the fourth place. So the first impression is important, but it drops. Then. The smile drops from the second place to the sixth place. You don't have to smile anymore if, <laughs> ladies, if this is what you wanted to know from me. And then kindness goes from the third place to the first place. This proves that we are men, are all just little kids, want somebody to hug us, even though of the bad reputation that we have. Yes, and then goes, uh, uh, sorry, and then can so, so sense of humor to the second place. And later on, communication skills, surprise, surprise, going to the third place. Nice? Right, some things, this is the way the matrix look. Actually, some interesting things that uh, appears here is listening skills on the seventh place, and money and wealth. Men, you're really disappointing. And my beloved one, general body type, drops to the ninth place. We don't care how it looks. <laughs> same goes to application. Really, I'm not kidding, just the same. Now, what can we learn from that? First. Men does have an emotional system. <laughs> yes, I don't believe it, so I took the gorilla upside down because I wanted to express that I'm not sure about that. But what is more important is that you can see the list, which is quite stable. That is much in common, there's much shared between human beings as much as concerned to what attracts them. And this means that uh, when we design applications, we can count on the simple fact that most people will love most of the things. But it's, uh, the picture is much more complicated than that. I want you to uh, take a look at this very nice lady. Is she attractive? This one? This one? Which is the most? A, B, C. C, C is the normal, right? A can even feel us bad, really feel us make us feel really bad about it. I mean, it's completely abnormal. It's too narrow. This is f can be considered as appealing, and this is the most appealing. Now, it goes like this. People, men as well as women, 
are attracted to a range to normalcy. That is, there is a range between odd and normal in the middle and odd to the other direction depending on the trait that you are trying to analyze now. Now, what is more important, that people are not attracted to the center of the normalcy range. They are attracted to something somehow deviated from that. Why is that? Because if we'll do that, more chances are that our genes will be a little different from the environment of the common one, and more chances are that our kids will survive. Now, is she attractive? Most people will say yes. Why is she that attractive? I want to use the best cliche in the world. What is the color of her hair? Blonde. She even took part in a movie named, do you know the movie? Men Love Blondes. I'm not kidding. Marilyn Monroe took part in a movie named Men Love Blondes. Now, why do men love blondes? They love blondes because 20% of the US population are naturally born blonde, which means it's not that common, but it is within the range of normalcy. And if it is within the range of normalcy, we'll get attracted to that lady or man. It's just the same. If it exceeds this normalcy, range of normalcy, we will never ever be attracted to them just like this very narrow face lady. So it goes to application. Here is an example. This is Motorola StarTech. The, the first widespread uh, uh, phone, mobile phone, I think, in the United States, and it's shaped this way, right? Why is it shaped this way? Because till that time, this is the way that the handset looked like. They looked curved, right? It's not that 15 years ago we couldn't make such thing. Touch screen represented already there, and even leaving the touch screen aside, we could make flat phones at that time. But flat phones are much too deviated from this shape. And if it is too deviated from this shape, it will be perceived as weird. If it will be perceived as weird, I won't, don't want to invest my genes in that because it won't survive unconsciously. I'm talking about unconscious uh, 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 situations all the time. So it took us 15 years to move from a curved shaped phone to a flat phone. Just to put the flat shape into normalcy. Now think of that. Till this day, what is this very nice daughter of my telling you? Call me, right? It's so stupid. How should you do that? Call me. Right? There's no phone like this anymore. Have you, anybody saw this layout of phone? You don't. But you don't, we are so fixated. But never mind. But it goes to applications really, really deep. This is J River Media Center. This is a media or a, a music player. It has navigation tree on the side, the albums here, and the currently played album below. Now have a look at which one is that? It is the Windows Media Player. Navigation tree, the album, and the list. And let's have a look at VLC media player, all the same navigation, and so forth and so forth. They are all the same, and they are all very popular because they fall in the range of normalcy. Okay? Now, have a look at this great media player. It has dots. <laughs> That's so weird. And when you touch a dot, then you see the album. In this case, I'm your man by Wham. It's not my personal taste, believe me. Just random sample. And then it suggests you further more music in this line of music. God knows who are they. Um, Umberto Tuzzi. Okay, perfect. And this is a media player. Now, this is not within the range of normalcy. It's too different. Anybody uses such kind of media player? Nobody in the audience. It's out of range. It's too weird. We are not attracted to. My genes won't survive here. Are you okay with me? It's really tough time. Yeah? Okay, we'll dance in a second. Yep. So think about normalcy and design a little on the side. This is my tip for you. Map normalcy. Don't try even to hit the middle of normalcy because you won't be special. You want to be special, but not too special. Otherwise, you won't, people won't uh, be attracted to you. Uh, okay, beauty. Right, beauty is something really important, right? So beauty attracts, no doubt about that. This is Venus going from the bath 
I think I made the wrong translation, but beauty attracts. So beautiful people attracts us. And there's this mathematics for beauty. We all know, or part of us know, five minutes. Ah, alrighty. That was a, clear, a hint. Okay, this is the golden ratio, right? You know the golden ratio? That is the ratio between length and width of objects which makes us feel good. Great. So if we turn this out and let's have a look at the Mona Lisa, we can easily see that the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa sorry, completely compliance with the golden ratio. We are attracted to faces which are, which match the golden ratio. I'm sure that if I would take Barry Faley and make it, this analysis, I'm sure I will fall into the golden ratio. I haven't done it, I'm sure about that. So, this for example, my Facebook, never mind, and you can easily see, sorry, that if you measure the ratio between the main working area and the rest is almost 1.6 to 1, which is the golden ratio. And you keep e measuring here, it will be almost the same golden ratio and so forth. And I think that you got my point. There's no second chance for first impression. Make a great first impression using your application. Okay? Perfect. We go to the last point. Uh, ah, from time to time I'm wrong, <laughs> needless to say. It's not that I cover everything. Flappy birds, it's so ugly and it's still a hit, but you haven't seen that. Yep. Okay, we get to the last point, which is dancing. Right. Dancing, what, uh, what does uh, it mean? What does it suggest to us? Now, is this dancer attractive? Not for your culture, probably for different culture completely, yes. Now, a research done by Dr. Nick Neve, it's from, it's from the UK, he took pictures of men dancing, and then he made the videos with the outlines of the people dancing. Okay, are you with me? And it showed them to women. So the women could not see the face, could not see the clothes, could not see how rich, tall, whatever the men, just the outline of real dance. And then he asked the women, how attractive are these men? And they range it from one to seven, one to nine, I don't care, it's okay. But what he done was something really interesting. He actually measured, he actually took the blood tests, uh, blood tests from this, gentlemen and counted the number of genetical problems with these guys. And surprise, 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 the women were attracted to the best dancers, which happened to be the most genetically wise, healthier. Let me put it this way, ladies, when you see somebody dancing, you can tell by the way he dances how healthy genetically he is, or what are the chances for your kids to survive. It has nothing to do with the, with the fact of how men see women dance. If you want to answer for that, approach me in the break. So basically, better dancers are better DNA. Now, what does it have to do to our small lecture? He found out what makes a good dance. It should be symmetry, it should be smoothness, and body core movement, body core movement, I mean the torso, this area of the body, okay? Big movement of that, right? It's not me, uh, okay, got you. Um, fine. So this is the uh, Apple site. Oh, is my wrong, it should be X here. When you press here, I don't have time, I wanted to switch the, to the site, sorry. It moves from the right to the left, it's not symmetrical, it's not smooth, and it does not even involve body core movement. Now let's take a look at, yes, we call back to a letter. Let's take a look and um, close window by Apple. This is a fast forward, okay, it's a standard move. Now let's slow down. You can see symmetrical movement, you can see smooth movement, and you can see the upper part of the core body move slowly down. So when we see this animation, basically our brains see a man dancing. And we are attracted to this animation, and you can discriminate between bad and good animations as much as concern how much do they um, uh, um, follow the rules of attractive dance. Now, since you don't believe me, I want to kindly ask you all to get off your chairs and we're going to dance now. Audio, please, uh, sound man. Get, get, get off your chair. Come on, come on. I won't bite you. Get, get. Yep. No. Or in Hebrew, Kumu Kvarma Kise. Go on, don't worry. And do, come on, get off your chairs. Don't worry. Don't take a picture, they're embarrassed. Okay. What we are going to do now, I asked, I hired a choreographer which made the animation dance, the same animation. 
She's gone within 35 seconds, because that's the time that I let her, 39, sorry. She will teach you the animation dance. Do whatever she does. Don't even try of thinking just to observe. Do it, it's fun, believe me. Are you with me? Yes. All righty, do we have sound, sound man? Click on X. Go do it. Click on X. Do that. Click on X. Turn to the left. Do that. Turn to the left. Click on X. Turn to the left. Windows close down. Windows close down. Together. Click on X. Turn to the left. Windows close down. Others is done. Click on X. Turn to the left. Windows close down. Others is done. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the animation dance. Now you got it in your sense. You felt the animation dance. Those of you who weren't too embarrassed could easily see the match between the dance and the movement of the screen. She is dancing. This is why you don't see dancer flipping this way and so forth, because it's not natural. So, since we have all danced and we don't have so much time, I want to thank you very much. The book is on the way. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you.